From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. Capitan Davidro Paral, senor, of the Ensenada Police. Oh, hi, Paral. I tried to call you a few minutes ago. We've had a shooting out here at the hotel. And uh, somebody, she's uh, dead, No, senor. no, nobody's dead. The bullet missed. Somebody fired a shot from the terrace into one of the rooms. I am flush with the red light, senor. I make the siren. I'm uh, calm like the wind. Good. But would you do me one thing before you blow up a storm? Mother, say? There's a man missing from his room here, a friend of the man who was shot at. He must be around town somewhere. Where is he? He's an Americano, about 45, named Frank Maltz. Frank Maltz. Bueno, we'll find him. I'm going to make one uh, APCT. B, you mean, APB. C, APB, like on radio in Los Estados. All right, hop to it, Perel. Uh, si, senor. Uh, senor, what it is, this APB? <laughs> Tonight, and every weekday night, Bob Bailey in the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. From Special Investigator Johnny Dollar, location Ensenada, Mexico... To the Home Office, Union States Casualty Company, Hartford, Connecticut. Assignment, The Laughing Matter. Expense account continued. <laughs> Item six, one dollar, a pot of coffee from the hotel kitchen, special. It was 1 a.m. I'd been half asleep when the shot was fired, and I hoped the coffee would help get me at least half awake. I hadn't expected it to happen that way, and neither had good old lovable Charlie Burton, America's favorite TV comic, according to his press agents. Charlie had called it a joke, but he wasn't laughing now, and neither was I. Charlie's life was insured for a half million bucks, payable to his sponsor. Where he is, senor, this uh, man who was get shot? He didn't get shot, Peral. He got shot at. Pues see, si, it's what I wish to say, but the tongue is no make English too good. Oh, you're doing fine. The manager gave Bert another room, inside, away from the terrace here. He's probably got the door locked and the furniture piled in front of it. Monday? I mean, he's scared, very scared. Comprende? Oh, sí, si, sí. Si. Él tiene mucho miedo. Yeah, I guess so. Now, according to his story, he was asleep here on this side of the bed. Someone fired the shot from outside on the terrace. It broke the window there. And the bullet lodged here in the bed, about six inches above Burton's head, where he was lying on the pillow. Sí, si, yo puedo verlo. And then he is wake up quick. He is... Um... Is no see nobody, senor? Is no hear nobody? No, he was too scared to know. He jumped out of bed, ran down the inside corridor, and banged on my door. I searched the terrace right away and didn't find a thing. And uh, these other people, uh, which are work for him to make the television, they are also having room which are close to these? Peral, your tongue may not make the English too good, but there's nothing wrong with your head. Monday? I mean, you're okay, amigo. You're a good cop. <laughs> Gracias, senor. Yes. Yes, any one of them could have fired that shot. And there being which ones, these people? Well, there's Frank Maltz. He's the producer of the Charlie Burton show. He's the one who was missing from his room, the one I asked you to locate. See, you say. Then there's Gloria Dale. She's the feminine star of the show. She's in the third room down. Uh, she is in the room of her when the shoot was fired? Yeah, yeah, she'd gone to bed. I, I had to beat on the door to wake her. She hadn't even heard the shot. She'd been pretty upset. She'd... Well, she'd been drinking earlier. See, si. it's always the same. These Americanas ladies which have come to Ensenada, always they are drink too much. Eh, you may be right. Anyway, the third member of the group is Al Schreiber, second room down. He's an actor, too. And where he is when these things happen? In bed, so he says. The shot woke him up, and he came out into the corridor while Burton was banging on my door. And these are all, senor? Yep, that's the bunch. Which one you think is no like this, Charlie? Every single one of them hates him. Mm. Then there's another possibility, too. That girl I asked you to check on earlier, the maid who works here at the hotel. You see, La Senora Velina Morales. Pues, we're looking, but we are not finding her yet. Oh? Ella no está en casa. She are no at her house, senor. Oh, I see. Uh, ni el marido tampoco es. Uh, uh, also, the, um, how you say, her, her husband is gone. Oh, then she is married. Oh, si, sí, senor. You're still looking for her, aren't you? Well, si, senor. No tenga cuidado. It's no big town, Ensenada. We are find her too soon now. I think you... 
Es por mí, yo creo. I am tell the manager I was here. La policía acá. Sí, Capitán de Vidro Paral. ¿Dónde? Bien, sí. Muy bien. Bien, adiós. Uh, this man you are have disappeared, señor. Frank Maltz? He yeah, was now be found. Where is he? Eh, es un cantina. A, a nightclub is called the 21. 21. Where is it? In town somewhere? You see, it is the... Um, how you say, señor? Uh, it's one big uh, hot spot. <laughs> Item seven, one dollar, taxi into town. Peral stayed at the hotel to talk to Charlie Burton and the others. I thought it might do some good, at least by keeping them off balance. Regardless of his knowledge of English, Peral was a smart lad, and his eyes never missed a thing. The Ventayuna may have been a hot spot earlier, but at this time of night it was almost deserted. There were a few weary B-girls drowsing at the bar, a scant handful of last-ditch patrons, and Frank Maltz, alone at a table. Glowing with mellow geniality and bottled health. <laughs> well, now, another night out with insomnia and a taste for dives. Pull up a chair, Johnny. Thanks. Been here long? Forever. Oh. At least for years and years. I am part of the place, my boy. These worm-eaten rafters, the crumbling walls, this musty aroma of ancient tequila that was spilt on these tiles long before you were even born. I see. You see, the place was built by the conquistadores, and I dropped in the very next day. I've been here ever since. Maltz, look, now, chum. Now, now, speak softly, softly, friend. This is hallowed ground. This is the meeting place. This is the crossroads, you see, for two separate worlds. The tourists come traipsing down from Beach Boulevard up there. They call it slumming. And the townsfolk come up from Gastelum and Balboa, and they all meet here. And they drink tequila, and then they dance the fandango. The, hey, amigo, how about playing a fandango? Hmm? <laughs> no, he can't hear, you know, because he is dead. We are all dead here, Johnny. You know something, Maltz? Mm -hmm. You're not nearly as plastic as you're pretending to be. I know that, Johnny. Have you been here all evening, here in the Ventayuna? <laughs> How do you like that name, Ventayuna? It means a 21, you yeah, know. Yeah, I know, I know. Have you been here in the 21 all evening? Oh, no. I've been in all of them. I just ended up here. Ever see a better place to end up, Johnny? Where were you around 1240 tonight? What? What are you driving at? Somebody took a shot at Charlie Burton tonight. Ooh, I got my fingers crossed, did they? No, no, they didn't hit him. Uh, well, maybe they'll have another chance. Not if I can prevent it. Now, that's why you were checking times on me, huh? You think uh, I maybe made a clay pigeon out of that rat. Did you? <laughs> Johnny, I left the hotel at 10 o'clock. I've been a lot of places since, but not back there. I don't know where I was at 1240. Maybe some bartender around town will know. I have seen them all tonight, one time or another. This lush stuff seems to be a habit with all of you, including Gloria. Well, stick around Burton a month, you'll know why. So, why do you stick around him? Me, personally, there's a couple of reasons, I guess. I'm trying to help somebody else, for one thing. Well, myself at the same time, of course. Meaning? Al Schreiber. The kid is great, Johnny, he really is. And it'll be his show next year. If we can hang on. And for the same sponsor. With you, producer? Well, that's right. They're fed up with Charlie Burton, and they've got reason to be. He's a phony name, Johnny, nothing else. It's a fake. It's a build-up. They've got to spend more on press relations now than it costs to produce the show. Then with Charlie out of it, you and Al would be in. Is that the way it stacks up? <laughs> that's right. You said you had a couple of reasons for staying on. Now, forget it. The second one is not important. It's... It's... It's a sob story. Well, it won't be the first one I've heard tonight. I'm married, you see, Johnny. 23 years now. And for the last eight, my wife has been completely paralyzed. Utterly helpless. She's in a sanitarium upstate. She has to have special care. Special treatments. And it costs $350 a week, 52 weeks a year. So I stay on with Burton and I go on hating him. And whenever the hate gets too bad, I go up and see her. Well, she doesn't know me. She doesn't know anyone. She just lies there and breathes. But I, I, I look at her. And I remember how she was. 
and how I loved her. I still love her, Johnny. So that's the way it is. I left him there in the cantina with his love and his hate and walked out into the street, empty and silent under the wheeling stars in the soft, dark night. A lone dog sidled past, gray and gaunt, intent on some mission of his own and faded into the shadows. And the town slept, its own loves and hates put aside until morning. Quiet town. Then the emptiness was filled with sound and a flashing red light slashed the darkness. Peral of the Ensenada police. He said the maid from the hotel, Valena Morales, had come home. One of his sergeants was waiting there with her. Buenas noches, senora. Buenas noches. The tiny room was lit by a flickering oil lamp and a candle burned beneath a crucifix on the wall above the bed. Cement floor and adobe walls, bare and clean like the cell of a nun in a convent. She was young, pretty, and at the moment, very frightened. She talked, yeah, no, I half crying, and Peral translated. Charlie Burton, yeah, old, no, lovable you. Charlie, had been bothering her, annoying her at the hotel. She tried to avoid him, but had made the mistake of telling her husband. He'd been furious and had come to the hotel earlier in the evening. That's when I'd see the two of them arguing on the terrace. She hadn't seen him since. So, Senor Dollar, what is it you are think? I think you'd better find a husband... And find him quick. Now, here's our star to tell you about tomorrow's intriguing episode of this week's story. Tomorrow, death tries once more. And this time doesn't miss. But death, you know, is blind. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood, written by Les Crutchfield, and is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone. Be sure to join us tomorrow night, same time and station, for the next exciting episode of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. Roy Rowan speaking. <laughs>